So I'm about to commit to the curve for the left side of my body. This is my body fabric and this is my background fabric. I chose it because I have an abundant amount of it to get my 40 inches by 40 inches and because I like how it looks with the kind of minimal pattern and especially I like that it's different from the fabric that I used last time around because this is my second time working with this pattern. So I'm beginning right here at 40 inches. So that's the amount of space that I have to work with. And because I did a silhouette where I was standing last time, I want to do a silhouette where I am in a more curved position this time. So I'm aiming for crescent moon pose and I just want to line up my left armpit with the top of the fabric and from there I have some choices about the silhouette that I'm making so I want to do a nice curved crescent moon and that looks pretty darn good to me I gotta slide over because my leg is covering okay perfect so rather than tracing on paper, which might be wasteful, I'm going to see if I can do it with some yarn this time. So I'm just going to lay that alongside my body. And I'm doing my leg part first because that's what I could reach. And now here I come for my arm. And so I'm just going to get that nice and snuggled in around my silhouette and I can be as true or untrue to the silhouette you know it's your your choice of how perfect you want to be in tracing things so to me that seems pretty darn good and now I can step back and look at my yarn and see if I like it and indeed it looks like me so that's good so now I am going to carefully hmm, I'm going to carefully pin my yarn in place so that then I can cut it out without cutting through that bottom layer that I have in place so you can see it. I would recommend for your sake that you have just the one layer laying down so that's a little easier to just cut immediately but anything that adds a little extra abstraction like things rolling around that can be interesting so I've got that nearly pinned down and then when I want to cut it the line that is my body is this side of the yarn, but I'm going to cut on the other side of the yarn so that I can turn my seam allowance under. I might even jog everything over an inch just so that I don't waste this extra scrap of fabric. And I'll meet you at the next step. So here you can see I have ironed under the edge of my seam allowance. I've got the shape of my body and I have aligned my two fabrics so there's not a whole lot of overlap right there. And I'm about to pin them in place. Using my ruler, I can see that I'm going to cut off a little extra and I wasn't I just kind of guessed at what the rest of that line was because I knew I started that accurate starting point was the bottom. So I'm going to pin this and then sew it together with my visible running stitch before I then chop this down to be a 40 inch square. So here you can see my previous quilt that I made and the way that my silhouette turned out. And now I have pieced my new silhouette where I'm in my supine crescent moon pose. 
and I've got 40 inches at this fold at the top. So now I get to use my ruler and decide where exactly I want to cut this off. So I might choose to have two inches or eight inches or, or however much of that neutral edge of the silhouette in it. But I want to also keep in mind that because I've got this very curved edge, my quilt is going to have a lot of that natural dye that I made with onion skins on it in this bottom half. And so maybe I don't want to cut in so far at the top. So if I'm two inches at the smallest side and I drag my way down, then that puts it at 21 inches here, which is just a hair over half of the quilt. And so that to me seems like a good place to cut things off. So now I'm going to cut off my edges so I have a 40 by 40 inch quilt top. At this point, step number one in the pattern is complete. I've got my 40 inch background and on top of it is my silhouette as traced from my left armpit down the left side of my body and it is attached to the left side of the quilt. So those are the aspects of the pattern that I've followed. I was able to use any color that I wanted and I chose to visibly hand piece the edge. My next step in the pattern Step number two, called birth, is to make a square to represent my birthday. It needs to be the number of inches across that represent my birth month, the number of inches down to represent my birth day, and it needs to be in the color of my birth stone. I was born in December, so my birthstone is turquoise. So those are the rules. From there, we also need to remember the overarching rule that I should be working with in my stash. So here, I get to look at all of my turquoise fabrics and see which one feels most appropriate. Also, my birth black should be along the left side of my pattern. So anywhere you can see onto the fabric of your choice. Oh, 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 birth. Use in cloth the color of your birthstone. Cut a square or a rectangle that relates to your birth date. Applique this black next to your body. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like my example next to my hip. It could be all the way at the tippy top, all the way at the very bottom. You've got to see where along your body feels right for you. So here are my colors that I get to decide. And these are just the colors that exist in my stash that I thought were close enough to turquoise that they could count for this step. So these are the fabrics that I get to choose from. Oh, I found a couple more, never mind. Got that. Got this if it's big enough and I could add a sliver of something else if I wanted to make it work. This also, this blue could maybe count if I wanted it to. This is a funny vintage print that could also work. Um, so I got to reflect and look at it and then I'll be ready to cut out my block.
when I was imagining this quilt, I thought I would want this fabric, but upon looking at everything and reflecting, I think I actually want this fabric. It's interesting because they are both fabrics that I got at the Rummage at the Wisconsin Museum of Quilts and Fiber Art, where I love to teach and do things, so it's neat that they have that history in common. That is actually also where I got this fabric that I used for the other quilt. Um, it happens every year around Father's Day in Wisconsin. So I've also been thinking about placement and I don't have to commit to that yet because I have to cut out my block the correct size no matter what. But I am currently leaning towards the top of the quilt and that is also just visual weight, etc influencing my decision for this fabric as my turquoise birthday block. So off I go to cut it out. I have very carefully cut this out, remembering to leave space for my seam allowance. So aiming for a finished block of 12 by 13, I cut out a block that's 13 inches by 14 down figuring that that would give me a little more room and accommodation for air because it's awkward cutting out something so large. So I used two rulers just to make sure that I was keeping even and square dimensions. Now that I have cut this out, I've realized it's not exactly the block that I wanted. So I have these two birds in the top corner, which I was excited about, but I didn't realize this the little guy was flying away and that um, is not what I want to manifest it's not the auspicious thing I'm going for so I'm going to have to do a little bit of fussy cutting to piece something to go over that spot which is allowed within the pattern I've found my ideal placement for my birthday block which is measured very precisely and you can see here that I edited my fabric to be an image that I like more. I very carefully ironed my corners inward. So I ironed one edge, ironed the other edge, and then I lifted and tucked in this corner and ironed it under so that that won't be visible when I applique the edge down. I've chosen this location because the binding is going to come up and be a nice close edge. And then here I'm also very close to the tracing of my body. I find that that messes with one's eyes a little bit. It's just a very satisfying way of looking at the quilt in an image. And uh, I don't know. I just like it. I like a skinny line. <laughs> so I'm going to pin this down, sew it in place, and I will be done with all the steps for this week. I finished pinning, and for this kind of applique, it's very important that everything be super flat. So you notice the applique is flat to the background to the floor. I can begin to piece it anywhere I'd like. I want to have a hidden knot. So I'll begin on the back. You can see here on the back that I've trimmed away the excess of my background fabric compared to my body also. And I can do that for this block when I'm done with it as well. I'll begin in any location and pierce through near the edge so there's not a big flap here. And then I can begin to sew the two in place with a visible running stitch. To do that, I'll use my thimble. And I just want to be mindful that I'm doing stitches that are a size that I like, that I think will look beautiful because they are visible. You wanna be careful about where you put your pins down all in the same place. And I'm able to stack a lot of stitches at a time because this is a straight line and because I'm not using an embroidery hoop. I'll press those through 
pull with my thumb over to make sure it doesn't get too tangled and then pull that taut. And I'll do that all the way around the end. Anytime I have a knot, I'll just make sure I tie that on the back. And I'm just being careful to take out these small applique pins as I get to them. I put enough in so that I can be confident that nothing is moving or wiggling on me and becoming the opposite of flat. So that's how that will continue. In the end, this is the back of my quilt. You can see the way that I have cut away any of the extra layers so it's just one layer of fabric everywhere. And this is the front. Up close you can see that I changed thread colors and started to use red for my birthday block. And there you have it.